in front of us you can see one of our car compounds. I'm sure those of you who are familiar with travelling over the M5 bridge have probably seen all the, the cars parked up and you probably just think we're a giant car park here. We do have other trades, but obviously cars is one of our major trades here. We handle over 700,000 cars per year. And coming up on the right hand side is one of our container terminals. We have two in Bristol, this is the larger one here in Portbury. Inside there we get containers from all around the world. And inside containers can be anything from garden furniture, clothes, drinks, food. The weirdest one I heard was a container just full of chewing gum, which was interesting. <laughs> One of the main uh, people that uh, they bring in containers for is the range who have a big distribution centre down in Avonmouth, but also B&Q as well. Tree products. It can also be used towards making cardboard boxes, so with the increase of people trying to not use plastic, we're seeing an increase in wood pulp coming to the port because it's being used to make cardboard boxes, for example, for Amazon. On the left hand side here you can see Mitsubishi's import centre. <laughs> in front of us you can see our lock gates and these are the largest lock gates in the UK. has the third highest tidal range in the world after the Bay of Fundy and Bay of Ungava in Canada. So we have to ensure that we maintain the correct level of depth within the dock which is why we have So it's over 30 years old and it's French and it's basically like a hoover so it sucks out the mud that builds up within the dock and takes it back out into the estuary to ensure that we have the correct level of depth within the dock. On the far left, that's the Arklo Rover, I believe. Just going to double check. Dock. There's a crew of six normally on board. Three will stay on overnight so they can actually sleep on there. And up as the car ship, the Neptune Galene. You may notice that this particular ship has eyes painted on. Right hand side, we're just going past our cruise marquee. We normally handle cruise operations over in Avonmouth, but because we've got larger ships coming in, we've had to move the operations. We'll be unloading a few cars, putting a few more back on, then we'll be going off to Zabrugga. On the right hand side, you can see some train carriages. They come in from northern Spain on a vessel called the Also Sun which comes once a week. On the right hand side you can see some fiats and they will be uh, taken off to different dealerships around the country. This is what you can see here, the RCC Shanghai. That has come in from Portugal and then we'll be going off to Turkey. So they're a bit like buses really, these car ships. They may start off in say Japan or China, then come here, well, go to Le Havre or Santander, and then there's a chute in which the commodity can fall, which is why it creates this almost mountainous effect. So we have two of these sheds, and they can both hold 150,000 tonnes each. The coal ship would berth here on the left-hand side between these two cranes, which are called Gantry crane. Sorry, no, continuous ship and loaders had a complete mind blank there. <laughs> coal is taken out of the hold of the ship and then put onto this conveyor belt, which is six kilometres long and runs underneath the River Avon and comes out over an Avon mouth. If you wanted to, you could walk it, not that you would because it's obviously very dirty and dusty, but I guess it's one way to beat the traffic on a Friday night. handle as much coal anymore obviously with the government wanting to get rid of all power stations fueled by coal but we are heavily involved in the Hinkley project at the moment so we're hoping to be able to use our conveyor belt here for handling 
But you can see these pipes as they on the left hand side now and then you can see them disappear underground and then come up again on the right hand side. Just about to go underneath the Colcom layer again. So, in the car ships, you can have up to 5,000 cars at one time. So, they're basically multi story car parks on water. But apparently have the nicest uh, living quarters for crew. It's a much nicer than a cruise ship because there's a bit more space obviously once the cars are all. On the right hand side, the ship that you can see here is a cable ship called Gerbil and it comes in from America. We also have another one called the Transponder that comes in and they come and collect cables and then go back out to the Atlantic to lay the figure. this one coming up on the right hand side, these are just abandoned buildings. I'm slowly in the process of locking them down but it costs a lot of money to do that and obviously it can be very dusty as well so we have to bear that in mind because if you look to the left hand side now you can see that we're quite close to even our village so we have to bear in mind our eyesight when doing any activities like that. The conveyor belt that we're driving alongside, this is the coal conveyor that I pointed out over in Hawkbury. You can see some more new cars, this time for Foxhall, and these also come in on the Autosun, the vessel that comes from northern Spain, which has things on like the trench. On the left hand side, you can see uh, that we have some space. You also can see the way we have our used by the building trade. On the right hand side here, this is the ADM milling and they are an important part of the supply chain process in regards to making bread. So they actually mill the flour here on site. Occasionally they have to make sure that it meets their quality requirements. So they'll bake a loaf of bread, which I've been informed is the nicest tasting bread. <laughs> on the left hand side, you can see the River Avon. <coughs> And you can also see over to Port. This here on the right hand side is part of the scrap metal terminal, which is operated by Sims. This is just bits of old factory here on the right hand side, and it might look like rubbish, but there's actually people bidding for those parts. <laughs> on the right hand side here, this is uh, San Yong's vehicles. Uh, made in Korea. In the shed in front of us, a shed, they also have a workshop in there. <coughs> so again, special features can be added on. Design execs. And we've had more interest from Saga coming back and Fred Olsen as well. I mean, 
met with Disney Line too, who are quite interested in coming to Port Breeze. <laughs> we don't want to fall off the side. But the reason why I bring people here is not just to scare them, but it's to point out on the left hand side you can see back over to Port Breeze and in the distance Porter's Head. In front of us you can see over to Newport and on the right hand side you can see the uh, Seven Bridge. <laughs> At the end here, you can. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> snack, eating his Christmas dinner. I would feel sorry for him, but he gets very well paid, so. <laughs> On the left hand side, you can see a black jetty that was put up during the Second World War because they were the Germans were on the lot. See the River Avon going on down into the centre. So we can work out how much dredging that we need to do. It also found about two years ago a shipwreck that had never been discovered before down towards Cleveland. So there was a ship called the Brunswick which was uh, on its way to Bristol on Christmas Eve from Liverpool. And inside again you'll be able to see our other vessel which is the Graham Robertson, which is one of our new toys. Well, they're saying that it's come up to three years old now, but that is a plough dredger. So you saw the Malago over in Portbury which is like a hoover. This one is a plough at the back so it has like a giant skip which basically scoops up the mud and then they go back out to the estuary and uh, dump the mud. It's also a multi-purpose work boat, so it can... Fertiliser and also grain. In front of us you can see our second container terminal. This is mostly for short sea shipping, so from Ireland and Spain. And here we handle containers which normally have things in such as wine, tiles and garden products. You can see some garden products made by a company called Enercom, but they're run by a Gloucestershire company uh, called Ecotricity, and they run just off a laptop. You may have seen.